Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. We welcome all who have come out to worship with us this morning. And we also welcome those who are tuning in electronically. I am Reverend Barney Grace, and I appreciate the opportunity to fill your pulpit as our son, Reverend Bill Grace, is on study leave, and we'll be back next week. And I use the word hour. Linda and I are not only partners in life, but we're a team in ministry. She has filled the pulpit for me on occasion. She has chaired meetings. She was the president of the Lindsay Peterborough Presbyterial for two terms, and also of our synodical. She is my go-to person when I'm not sure whether to turn left or turn right or go straight. Our son, Reverend Bill, is on study leave. And sometimes we ask the question, why would you take a study leave in this time of COVID? Ministry during this time of COVID goes beyond being different. It's stressful. For the most part, what you want to do, you can't. Regulations stop you. COVID restrictions come into place. So you have to find new ways for example, youth group, Bible study session, and board meetings and ladies groups cannot meet in person. And that's a tremendous obstacle. Zoom is a great tool, but it's not as personal as sitting around a table. We haven't touched in home visits that have to be done over the telephone or funerals that are restricted to 10 people. There's a lot of stress. Let us together experience our call to worship. Let us be joyful before God. Let us be jubilant this day. We will sing praises to God's holy name. Let us lift up a song to the one who rides upon the clouds. For God also protects orphans and widows and gives the desolate a home. Sing to God, O nations of the earth. We will sing praises to the Lord our God. May we come together before God as we bow our heads in prayers of adoration and confession. Our loving and faithful Lord, we come before you giving you thanks 
that you give beyond our imagination, who loves us beyond our comprehension. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your steadfast love, which we know, we feel. And we confess that we do not always deserve, but which we greatly appreciate. And we adore you for your love, your patience, your kindness, your light. Though we have sinned against you and your creation, you continue to reach out for us to us with forgiveness and love. You are always there. What greater love can we receive than the cross where you gave your Son, our Lord and Savior, to die for us? our sins, for our reconciliation. Remind us, Lord, that as disciples, you have called us to give ourselves to others. Help us to be more like Jesus, to care more like him, to share like he shared. And help us to realize the joy that comes through giving of ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Lead me, Lord. Lead me in your righteousness. Make your way plain before my face. For it is you and you are only who makes me dwell in the city. Our responsive reading is found on your insert. Today's reading is taken from Psalm 68, verses 1 to 8. May God arise. May his enemies be scattered. May his foes flee from him. May he blow them away like smoke, as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God. But may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing. But the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you, O oh God, went before your people, when you marched through the wilderness. The earth shook, the heavens poured down rain, before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. Amen to the sharing of his most holy word. And now may we enjoy our ministry of beauty. Thank you. 
the light remove so quickly the darkness. Let us bow our heads as we pray for illumination upon God's word. Almighty God, you are indeed the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are indeed the light within our world, that light that you have sent to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray this morning, O Lord, as Scripture is shared within these walls and electronically, that your light be upon them, that we will understand, we will feel, we will know what it is you are saying to us, and may that scripture, O oh Lord, be further illuminated as we share in the message this morning. Bless, O oh Lord, the reader and those who hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Kevin, I would invite you now to share scripture with us. Our first scripture reading is taken from the New Testament Gospel according to St. John, chapter 7, verses 37 to 44. St. John's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 37 to 44. In the last day, that great day, of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him, and some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Amen. And our second scripture reading taken from the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 14 to 21. Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 21. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. 
And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Kevin. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come together as like minded people to worship, to give thanks, to ask forgiveness. And Father, may a word to my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be of a glorious praise unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. As my wife and I drove down from Lindsay this morning, for some reason the conversation came up about this world being in a bad spot about so many things happening that are not right. And we come up with two or three possibilities of what might be causing that. During the 50s, there was a glorious boom in the church after World War II. And churches added to their buildings. Churches built new buildings. Churches had Sunday schools that were very, very well attended. And the one answer that we come up with is the world, and the overall, not all of it, is suffering from moral decay. There is not much that you can do or not do in society today that shocks anybody. Everything is okay. Five days from today, our oldest son, who was born 32 years into our, 32 months, not years, <laughs> into our marriage, brightened our life. And at that time, we realized that we had been given an awesome responsibility by God. We were to bring him up knowing what was right, knowing who his creator was and why. And then we would go on to be blessed with two more children. And I'm not going to try and count the months this time. <laughs> it was our daughter, Megan. And now we had a boy and a girl. And each of them thought differently. And we had to teach them what was right and what was wrong. And that God's spirit would work in their lives. And then seven years later, 10 years between one and three, our son Bill, your minister, was born. And he too had to be taught the responsibility that God gave us, right from wrong, good from evil. The Spirit of God was there to work in his, his life. Today we celebrate Pentecost. 
And usually you go straight to Acts and you find that reading where Paul is talking to the crowd. And I enjoy that description of Pentecost as described by Peter in Acts 2. He is talking with thousands of people who are each able to understand him in their own language. And there are many different languages in the crowd. They are of one accord. And that's what God calls us to be, of one accord. Then suddenly there's a sound from heaven, like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where people were sitting. There was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of questions being asked. There was a lot of theories being put forward. And I like that part where Peter speaks by saying, these men are not drunk, as you suppose. He reminds them that it is only the third hour of the day. Peter goes on to explain that they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And today I would like to leave that part of the Pentecost story and go over to John chapter 7, basically verses 37 to 39. I would like to focus on the Holy Spirit working within us as found in John. When Jesus talks about the work of the Spirit, some of us respond with excitement, and others with a wee bit of apprehension. The possibilities are exciting, they're actually wonderful, but the unknown can be scary. I've spoken from the pulpit in different congregations where people said to me, I wish you wouldn't talk about that Holy Spirit stuff. Why can't we just keep it within our own church and leave that spirit business out of it? They found it to be scary. But without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we as Christians are walking alone. We may wonder what this will requires of us and how the Spirit may change our lives. And I guarantee you folks, it will change your lives. We may doubt that the Spirit would be interested in working with us. Why would the Spirit want to be bothered with me? I'm just a pebble on the beach of life. Jesus addresses these concerns as he clearly defines the function of the Spirit, the purpose of the Spirit, the why of the Spirit, the who of the Spirit. First of all, the Spirit is for you. You, 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 and all of you in electronic land. The promise of the Spirit is given to two groups of people, those who thirst and those who believe. The message, however, causes us to wonder if these are really two groups of people. Jesus calls the thirsty, those who are in need, those who are in want, and he says, come and drink. Who are the thirsty? The thirsty are all around us in this world that's going through such a moral decay. We meet them in the marketplace. 
We meet them in our places of work, in our recreation. They are the unknown beyond the boundaries of our daily life. Jesus commands us to let the thirsty come to him. Bring the thirsty to him. Are we doing all we can to enable the thirsty to come? We pray that our words and actions do not become a barrier to those who thirst. When was the last time you and I were thirsty? It is so easy to hear the words and think of the thirsty as those who are on the outside, those who have not chosen to walk through the doors of this church, while well, we are in the inside. Yet we can thirst as well. The message for us is the same. Come to me, Jesus is saying. And once we do, something remarkable happens. We begin to look beyond ourselves. We discover that it is much better to give than to receive. Our levels of compassion go to heights that we never would have imagined. What takes place when we drink from the hands of Jesus? Our lives pour forth rivers of living water. People see us, people hear us, and they would like to be the way we are. This is the work of the Holy Spirit for all who believe. Lives are changed. It begins with a thirst for living water. Wanting something different, something more, something real. Something you can touch. The thirst is quenched by the coming of Jesus. The Jesus who walked the past of this world. The Jesus who went to the cross at Calvary for you and I. The Jesus who loves us. Through this process, we are changed and we become a source of living water to others. To others who want an answer to why we are here. What is the purpose of my life on this earth? How do I get through the difficult times? And we all know that there are difficult times on this earth. Jesus never promised us an easy ride. But he said, I promise you this. You will not be alone. I will see you through your lives. I will lead you to eternal life. And as we travel through life, As we walk in God's light, we will discover why we are here. And sometimes it's just a wee bit of time. Sometimes just a few moments or one week. You can look back and say, that was good. That was real. God's hand was in it. But what does it all mean? If we want to experience the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we have to get thirsty first. We have to want to make a difference. Only when we get thirsty for God, 
His strength and His love in our lives, can we experience Him more fully? Second, we have to drink from the hands of Jesus. That's right, folks, we have to drink from the hands of Jesus. We can do this every day of our lives through prayer, Bible study, and meditation. Third, we must allow all we have gained through our relationship with Him to flow forth into the lives of others. And so often we reach out and we do not get a response. Jesus knew this as He walked those dusty roads. He knew this as He heard the crowd how to crucify Him, crucify Him. But he went on to say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. We are called upon to reach out in love, in the love that God has given us. But sometimes we are afraid. We are afraid to follow the signs that we are given. Sometimes it is easier to turn our backs when we should walk forward. The story is told of a thirsty traveler searching for water in the desert. He discovers a pump attached to a well. And beside the pump there is a jug of water with a sign. And this sign warns that he must prime the pump first in order to receive water with the jug that is sitting there. Then he can drink all of the water he desires. And do not forget to refill the jug for others. After some sober thought, and there was some sober thought, do I trust that this jug of water will prime the pump or shall I take a drink and quench my thirst for this moment? But the sign is saying, prime the pump. And you will drink in abundance. Fresh, clear, cold water. The work of the Spirit in our lives is similar. We must first prime our pumps. We must want to make a difference in this world. We prime our pumps before we can produce water for the thirsty. Once we are filled, the living water within us can flow into the lives of others. And we can make a difference in our neighbors, our friends, our children, our grandchildren, even strangers. Jesus tells us to share our living water and lead the thirsty to him. As Peter shared in that first day of Pentecost, over 3,000 souls were saved. May we, may you and I, in the name of Jesus, reach out to the thirsty, that they too may spend their eternity in heaven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you allowed your Son to go to the cross for our sins. And may we remember the words on that bracelet that we gave out to children at Vacation Bible School one year. To do what Jesus does. And Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you use us 
that you give us the opportunity to reach out, to comfort, to lift up, to give hope to those that you put across our paths. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The reality is that our church functions on the givings, the tithing, and the love of others. But the wonderful thing is that all of the money that is collected is used on this earth to make a difference in our lives and the lives of people we may not meet. As you come in, you deposited your offering in a box at the back of the church. And if not, you may do it on your way out. Let us have a separate prayer as we dedicate that offering to God. Almighty God, we have chosen to come into your church this Sunday morning to sit and worship together as like-minded people. We have given unto you a portion of that which you have given unto us. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you bless the tithes and the offerings in the collection box at the back of this church, that they may go forward, being streams of living water, touching those in need, those who want hope, those who want a purpose in life that includes you and your Son, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A very important time in our service is when we hold up each of you in prayer. When we hold up the lives that are ahead of you today, tomorrow, and the rest of the week, and the rest of the month. As we pray for those who are not within the walls of this church, or the electronic audience beyond the walls of this church. Let us together bow our heads in prayer. Almighty and loving God, we come before you, O oh Lord, praying for the people of your congregation. That includes those sitting in the pews, those absent from the pews, those coming to us electronically. We pray, O oh Lord, that life will be good. That life in times of sickness, in times of hurt, in times of fear, will be possible because of your love. That we will be led through the dark periods of our life. And Lord, we know there are dark periods. This COVID-19 being the largest most of us have experienced. And we keep looking for an end, O Lord. Give us patience, O God, as that end draws near. Lead us, O oh Lord, in a way in which we can be protected physically through vaccines. And as our mental health is tested, O oh Lord, may the comfort and love of the living waters of Jesus Christ comfort us. Blessed Lord, we pray for the young people 
of our community and of the world. We pray, O oh Lord, for their safety. We pray, O oh Lord, that a light will cross their path to teach them of the love of Jesus. Father, we come before you holding up those who are laid aside with sickness, some in hospital, some in nursing homes, others in their own homes. May your healing hand, O oh Lord, touch each of them in a special way. And I hold up to you, O oh God, Linda's sister, who is in hospital in Ottawa, healing from heart problems. Heal her, O oh God. Bring her home in hell. Blessed and Almighty God, so many fears going around in our society. People looking for work. People trying to stretch that dollar to meet the obligations of the week or the month. Touch them all. May a miracle take place in their lives that all things will meet. Gracious and Almighty God, in each of us there is a prayer, there is a need, and we ask, O oh Lord, that you hear us in this time of silent prayer within our hearts and souls. Father, as we pass through this pandemic, we pray for the leadership of our regions, of our province, of our country, and of the World Health Organization, who are doing their very best to lead us through a difficult time. We pray, O oh God, for comfort and peace for each one of your children. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would say to you, go in to your journeys this week. Do what it is that you are called to do and know that you are not alone. Know that God has called you to make a difference. And if you touch only one life for a very brief moment, you are doing what God wants you to do. This we pray in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God's children said, Amen. Amen. I would just like to again thank, thank you so much to the Reverend Barney and Linda for coming down and for Sue doing this wonderful technology. Um, I've already had this, just a little thank you card from us in the congregation for our appreciation and our love for you. Thank and we you. hope that you'll have a safe trip home and that um, all will go well day by day. We know as we age, as I said to you, to Linda earlier, these golden years sometimes aren't as golden as they should be, but that's all right. But they can be. They can be, that is right. They can be. It's all up here and yeah. here. It really is. And uh, I just wanted to make mention, Arnold sent it here.